All right. <clears throat> so welcome, welcome everybody. Happy Sunday. Um, my thought for you that I've been playing with this week is on being fragile. Yeah. So the image I've been using is if you imagine, right, because we're in this building springtime energy, um, you imagine, right, that a little bird in an egg, right? They have a very contained world. And so they have a concept of what their world is, but they it's very contained and maybe they don't even realize that. But they have an instinct at some point, right? And they're born with these little teeth on their beaks that are designed to help them break through the egg. And so when that instinct is there, they start to tap, right? And you can imagine a little bird that's only known what it is to live in that egg. It's tapping, it's tapping, tapping at the literal edge of its world, trying to break out. And maybe it feels like it's impossible because the bird doesn't know how thick that barrier is. It just knows it's got to get out. But taps and taps and taps and taps and taps. And eventually that egg shell breaks open. And then what? The bird's exposed to the sky, right? And so that sky might seem like it is infinitely huge, big. And the bird is still very small, right? But it's now exposed to that sky. But a baby bird still can't fly, right? So it still has this time where now it's just in this um, eggshell that is a little bit bigger. And the shell is not so obvious anymore, but there's still this containment to its world. This is what I can do. This is what I can experience. This is what I can hold in that big sky, right? So the bird has to get to the point where it's able to realize that it has the ability to fly, right? And it takes time. At some point it realizes that again, it's an instinctual thing that it learns how to fly. And then the whole sky is, is the birds, right? Nothing can ever contain it as much again. The world just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger the more of the sky it explodes. So my thought is that every one of us is like that bird in the egg, right? And our eggshells might seem at times like they are very small and contained. And so we try to break through them because we also have that instinct, all of us, to break through whatever feels like it no longer is big enough for us. And then we get exposed to the sky and we get scared because we're like, I don't know how to fly. I don't know what to do with that. It's too big. So to remember that when you break free from that eggshell, there's always another eggshell. You're always contained. And as much of the sky as you can hold at any given moment is this is what in a yoga practice we say is that's your relationship to that infinite space. You don't have to try and hold all of it at once. You can't. But we can try to see as much of that um, potential as possible, feel as much into the world as is possible. And when you hit that edge, you say, that's just the next eggshell. And guess what? An eggshell, no matter how strong it feels, is meant to be broken, which means that it's by, na by its nature fragile. And that's something that we learn to live with as yogis is that experience that everything in this world is fragile, right? And instead of being scared that it might break, we start to look at the moment that says, if it's breaking, it means it's meant to break. And what it will do is it opens us up to more sky, but it's never gonna be more than you can hold, right? So there's that infiniteness that in yoga we say we're reaching for, but then we try to do it too fast and we get scared. And so we grab onto something else. We try to get back in the egg and it doesn't work. So remember that feeling of being fragile is a gift. That when things are fragile, it means that they are designed to change. They are designed to be broken. They are designed to be reimagined. But the sky is the sky. That's our teaching. The sky will always be there. As big as you can see it, feel it, experience it, it will be there. So our only practice, right, is to be willing to feel that fragility and to keep opening up to the sky as much as you can. A comfortable seat, let your eyes close if you're not already there. It's a persistent image for me these days of the bird and the egg tapping its way out, thinking that it's going to master the world and then realizing that, oh boy, it's too big for me to master, which is great. You don't have to master the world, you master flying. You master your own inner abilities. And then the world is yours, right? That infinite place is yours. Explore it as you will. So breathe in deeply at the top of the breath, pause and hold. And then exhale all the way out. And as you come to the end of that exhale, pause with no breath and squeeze way below your belly button. 
So all the way down at the sex organs. Yeah, I said it, sex organs, squeeze in and up. And then release that inhale. And then exhale all the way out again. And at the very end of that exhale, again, don't shorten it. Get all the breath out with no breath at the end of the exhale. Squeeze and lift from the base of your spine. Squeeze and lift like you're going to pull everything up to your throat. And then release it and inhale. And then exhale again at the end of that exhale. Same thing. Fully release the breath. And with no breath. Start to squeeze and lift from below your belly button all the way up. And then feel like your navel is drawing back and curling up under your ribs. You're going to round your middle back just a little bit hollow. And then release all of that inhale. And then exhale again all the way. The end of that exhale from the base of your spine, squeeze and lift, pull up hollow below your belly button. And then draw the navel back and under your ribs, hollow the middle back and then release and inhale. And then as you exhale again, the end of that exhale, with no breath, squeeze and lift below your belly button, draw your navel back and up under your ribs, and now drop your chin towards your chest, but pull up through the nape of your neck, so the back of your throat pulls up like you're gonna lift to the sky from the back of your throat. And then release and inhale. And then exhale all the way. With the end of that exhale, squeeze and lift from below your belly button, pull up, squeeze the sex organs, draw the navel in and up under the ribs, round, and then drop your chin and pull up through the back of your throat. And then release and inhale. One more. As you exhale all the way out, really complete the exhale. Let all the breath go. Don't try to hold on to it because you think it's safer. Let it go. And then pause with no breath, squeeze and lift like you're going to pull yourself up off the floor and pull that rib cage, navel in and up under the ribs. Drop your chin, pull up through the back of your throat, no breath, everything contained, your eggshell. And then release and inhale. And then exhale fully, don't hold on to anything. That's being in the sky, right? We don't hold on to anything. One more deep breath. As you exhale, this time, bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm. It will open sound of OM, take a deep breath in. And let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys. You can release your hands. Those were the bandhas. You've never done those before. Those internal engagements, those are what we call the bandhas. So that last one, dropping the chin and lifting up the back of the throat, that is Jalandhara Bandha. It's the strengthening of the neck. So go ahead and come forward onto hands and knees. Do a little yoga tutorial. <laughs> Why do we do the bandhas? Anyone know? My teacher's in training. <laughs> Anyone? Why do we do bandhas? Harness energy, correct. Start to cat and cow, please. Inhaling, chest forward, tail back, stretch the belly. Exhale, curl and round. The bandhas are said to be the way that we start to maintain and regulate prana. So the energy that is flowing through your system. So it's all the same energy we say in yoga. It's the same energy that uh, embodies everything, that powers everything, same life force. But when it's flowing through you, is it has the unique qualities of you, right? It, it enlivens everything that you are. And so what the sages say is that we waste a lot of our prana. We waste it through worry. We waste it through talking about things that don't matter. We waste it through watching things and getting angry and not that getting angry is a problem, but we get angry again at things that don't matter or that don't matter for the reasons we're angry. <laughs> Good. Move yourself a tiny bit faster, please. So still paying attention to your breath, but move just a little bit faster.
So the bandhas are a way to start to feel that sense of containment. Mm -hmm. That through the breath, which is also prana, is that you are aware of energy as it runs through you, your resources. And that squeezing and lifting everything that corresponds to diaphragms in the body is you're actually just pulling that energy in and containing it. it. Has more time to work within your system instead of being expelled out into the world. Good, come back to stillness, please, on hands and knees. Stretch your right leg back behind you, left arm forward in front of you. Good, draw that low rib cage in and up. So switch your hands, Lena, or switch. Nice, you guys. Draw that low rib cage in and up so the navel is engaged. Can you do those three bandhas here? The answer is yes. <laughs> so draw that low belly in and up. You're going to feel almost a flattening of your lower back. And then draw the navel in and up under your ribs. And now drop your chin towards your chest, but press up through the back of your head. Good. Maintain that. Turn that left palm down towards the floor and just start to pulse the leg and the arm higher and lower and higher and lower with each breath. Good. Inhale, lower. Inhale, lower, not putting it down, just keeping it lifted and doing little pulses. <laughs> Good, I know, pectorals, what are we doing? Good, deep breath in, lift everything. Beautiful, and then release that hand down to the floor. Take the right foot down to the floor, please. And then extend your left leg back as well into plank pose. The right foot to the floor, send the left leg back into plank. Good, squeeze those upper arms towards each other. Drop your chin towards your chest. Press up through the back of your rib cage first. So ribs draw in and then the back of the throat lifts. And now take your gaze forward more towards the tips of your fingers. Roll forward, bring your shoulders all the way to the tips of your fingers. And then drop the knees down to the floor, please. Bend your elbows, bring your chest to the floor between your thumbs and lift your chin. So you're on knees, chest and chin, your butt is to the sky. Good, so press down through those knees and squeeze forward. Press into your hands and squeeze back. And now roll those shoulders up and away from the floor. One more breath. Good, pull forward onto your belly, please. Stretch your arms back towards your feet, palms facing down. Good, stretch out through the legs, lift those legs up off the floor, pressing through the front edge of your pubis bone. And then lift up upper body as well, pulling from that low rib cage, float the arms up into locust, drop your chin and press up through the back of your throat. Good, move your hands slightly wider, palms facing down and then push down into the air like it's heavy and lift the top of your chest more. That's it. And then release all the way down. Please plant the hands, press up to hands and knees. Good, stretch your right arm out wide to the right. Slide that arm behind your left wrist, right shoulder finds the floor. Walk your left arm forward towards straight so you're threading the needle. Make sure that your shoulder is not too close to your knees. You should still have the full length of your thigh weight. But press into your shins. Nice. As you press through that right arm into the floor, feel a little space at the front of that right shoulder joint, and then take your left arm up to the sky. And again, if that puts too much pressure on your neck, bring that hand back down. Good. Turn the palm to face back, bend the elbow, reach the hand for that outer right hip, or just bring the palm to your sacrum. And if your palm is at your sacrum, press your sacrum up into your hand. Get more aware of how much space there is in your elbow. Good. Stretch that arm back up to the sky, please. Release the hand down. Come back up onto hands and knees. Nice. And then do the other side. Take the left arm out and wide. Slide that arm behind your right wrist. Left shoulder finds the floor. Walk the right arm forward in front of you. Again, pressing into your shins. You got to move that left hip a little wider to the left. Good. And then you're still pressing into that left shoulder, that left arm that's on the floor. You're not just dropping your weight into it, but you're using it to push the floor away. And then you're waiting for me to open the window. <laughs> go. Good. And then take that right arm up to the sky. Again, if you can, and your neck may not enjoy that. If it doesn't, keep the hand on the ground. Either take that hand, turn the palm back, reach for the outer left hip, or bring your palm to your sacrum. Good. And again, if your hand is at your sacrum, press your sacrum up into your hand. So you still have that feeling of drawing energy up, not just pushing down. Good. And then release that right arm back up to the sky. Take the hand back to the floor. Come back to hands and knees. Nice job. Good. Left leg comes back and up behind you. Right arm comes forward. So it should be the second side balance. 
Good, you gotta press into that right shin and that left hand, so you're pushing the floor away, and then feel again those bandhas, so pull up to below your belly button, so the lower back gets support, and then the rib cage draws in and up, and then you drop your chin to look straight down, but then press up to the back of your throat. Good, maintain that, turn your right palm down towards the floor, and start to just pulse the leg and the arm up, just a little bit. Good, when you lift that arm and that leg, don't push the pelvis forward, so don't arch your back to do it. Good, so it's really having to engage through your glutes, through your shoulders, through your back. Nice. Should be a little movement. If you're moving fast, you're probably not realizing what you're doing. Good, pause and lift everything. Yeah, good, you guys. And then release the hand, release the knee, or release the foot, please, so step back into plank pose, so both feet come back. Good. Rib cage draws in and up, so look back towards your belly button again. Pull up through that middle rib cage and feel that low belly drawing in and up as well. Nice. And now lift the back of your throat. Look forward towards the tips of your fingers. Roll your weight forward towards the tips of your fingers a lot. Good. And then bend your knees, drop them down to the floor, and then stay where you are. Pull those ribs in. Bend your elbows, pointing straight back. Lower your chest so you come parallel to the floor. Pause. And then push the floor away. Pectorals. Stretch. <laughs> you gotta work them first. Bend the elbows, <laughs> come forward, and press the floor away. I was on this kick this week anyway. So you're all stuck with this. Bend the elbows one more time, lower down, pause. Ribs in, press the floor away. Nice. Take your knees wide, press back to child's pose. Exactly. The minute you voice the desire to the universe, you're going to get what you need. <laughs> I am sure about that. <laughs> you will get what you need, not necessarily what your mind says it wants. Nice, you guys. Take one more breath. Good. And then walk yourself back up onto hands and knees, please. Press back down. We're facing dog. Hold yourself. Hold yourself. Right on the ground. Press into those hands, please. Let your elbows bend wide in your down dog. So as your elbows bend, right? They go out wide. The shoulders move towards the hips. Beautiful. And now draw that lower rib cage in and up. And now squeeze your elbows so they point towards the back of your mat again. The elbows are still bent. And pull that rib cage in again. Now lift the back of your throat. Good. And now press into your hands. Pull your hips higher to straighten the arms. And then keep that widening of your shoulders as much as you can. Lift the back of your throat. Good. Right leg comes up and back behind you. Down dog split. Nice. Step that foot forward between the hands, please. Inhale the arms up to the sky. High lunge. Nice, you guys. Take your arms into cactus arms. Because for once, having your arms on straight, you're going to run into these. Amazing. Twist to your right, please, towards that front leg. Good. Widen those elbows. Here's your pectoral stretch, right? Widen those elbows, but then start to squeeze the tips of the elbows forward again. So the arms go wide, the armpits go wide, but the inner elbows squeeze in. Good. Now stretch your arms out wide to a letter T in your twin. Nice. Reach forward through that left side waist a little more. As you do, kick that back thigh up higher. And then let that left hand touch down, right arm to the sky twist. Good. Nice, you guys. Drop your gaze down towards that left hand. And let your right hand come slightly forward towards your chest. And then bring your thumb up towards the top of your head. Good. Now start to open your rib cage again. And once you've opened the ribs, now take your gaze up towards those right fingers. Don't keep pulling the hand back. Uh-huh. Release that hand down to the floor. Walk yourself to the left. Come to the center of your mat. Turn your toes, your wide leg. Feet parallel the short edges of your mat. Squeeze those legs towards each other. Great thing about bandhas is that, is that if you remember to use them is you will feel stronger in your poses than maybe you ever have. Why? Because you're now drawing on that energy from within instead of trying to figure out where it's going to come from. Right? So there's a huge aspect of yoga practice that is involved in trusting. Not just trusting something bigger than you, but trusting that that bigness exists inside of you. So we can learn to ask for it out there. You'll get what you need, not what you want. But you can ask for it within too, and you will be shocked at how much is there. 
One more deep breath. Nice. Then walk yourself back towards the top of your mat, please. Turn those right toes forward again. Spin your back heel up. And then walk your hands forward in front of you. Step up into standing splits. Your left side comes parallel to the floor. You block underneath the hands here against the side. Good. Drop your head and do nothing with it. <laughs> Good. Now press into your hands. Curl into that low belly again. Draw your navel in and up under your ribs. Get round. And now as you press into those hands, lift your chest forward. Lift through the back of your throat. So drop your gaze down. You're not looking forward, but lift through the back of your neck. Beautiful. Nice, you guys. One more breath. Excellent. And then go ahead and step that left foot forward alongside the right, standing forward. Hold. Good. Take your hands to your hips. Come all the way up to stand. Right knee up in towards your chest. Got it. Good. Take that right thigh on top of your left, bending the left knee as you wrap the legs into eagle pose. Your butt comes slightly back, and you're pressing your shins against each other. That's the most important part. Navel draws in, drop your seat. And then arms out wide, take your left arm on top of your right in front of your chest and squeeze the forearms. Good. If you are double wrapping the ankle, that's fine. Just make sure that you're not letting that right hip spin forward. Pull it wide. Nice, you guys. Exhale the elbows down towards your knees. Round your back, drop your chin. And pull up through the back of your throat. Drop your chin, pull up through the back of your throat. Pull your shoulders wide. Nice. Beautiful, you guys. Now lift your chest forward, look forward, and unwind that right leg straight back behind you into a warrior three. Don't unwrap the arms unless you have to. Good. Warrior three. Hover that right leg. Nice. Now stretch your arms alongside your ears. Warrior three. Deep breath. Good. Release the hands back to the floor or your block. Stand in split. Good. Curl into that low belly. Nice. And then bend that left knee, step it all the way back into a nice long lunge. Yeah. Inhale the arms to the sky. <laughs> yep, you're on the lunge on the second side. Oh, God, no vinyasa. Bend your elbows wide, cactus arms. Good. Feel your ribs draw in, so you're still getting super tall. You can just lift up into your chest. And then twist to your left, please, towards that front side. Keep pulling the ribs in and back. Now stretch your arms out to that letter T. Kick your back thigh up higher as you lean forward through that right side rib cage. So get as long as you can, like you're reaching for triangle pose. Good, kick that back thigh up. Nice, right hand touches down to the floor, left arm to the sky, take your twist. And still look for that feeling of the ribs drawing back, the throat drawing back. Take your gaze down towards that right hand and let your left hand move slightly forward and then bring the thumb up towards the top of your head, open the armpit. Nice, now draw your rib cage back round and start to stack your left ribs open more. That's it. And now draw your throat back as you look up at that left hand. I know. And then release that hand down to the floor. Great job. Step yourself back to downward face. Oh, yeah, yeah. But look at that, you did both sides, one go. Come forward to plank pose up for a second. Good. Drop your knees down to the floor, please. Shift your weight forward, so armpits towards the tips of your fingers. And then bend the elbows again. Drop your chest straight down to the floor between your thumbs. Good. Drive your knees forward. Drive your hands back. Roll those arm bones up and back. Pull your ribs away from the floor. Nice. Now pull all the way forward onto your belly, please. And with your toes, rise up into cobra. Lift up head, neck, and chest. Nice. And then let yourself twist from side to side. So you're turning the whole rib cage, not just the swaying, but the twisting. You gotta turn your rib. Good. Keep a subtle bend in your elbows so that you're not just pulling on your shoulder joint, but you're using the mobility there to move your rib. Good. Come back to center, please. Release the uh, chest back down to the floor. Nice job. Stretch your right arm out wide to the right. I know you hear both people next to you, but do it. <laughs> Palm facing down. Start to roll onto that right hip, please. This is what she wanted the whole time. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, do your best to try and maneuver your hands around the mat of the person uh, next to you who you are touching. Because you do want your 
hand to be close to in line with your shoulder. Sorry. I will direct traffic so that nobody accidentally grabs it. They shouldn't. That top foot, you guys can come back behind you if you'd like, bend the knee and let the foot find the floor. Maybe that feels fantastic. Head can rest on the floor. Breathe really deeply. Maybe even enjoy your breath. Weird possibility. For years practicing yoga, the feeling for me has been that if you are opening up to that bigness, that you have to be 100% open to it, overexposed. And maybe that is the experience that ultimately can happen and may happen for all of us. You don't have to do that today. And that's the hard thing to remember is that one day that will feel useful. And that, if that's not today, then just see how much sky you can be open to. And see how willing you are to let things be fragile. This too will change. Slowly unwind yourself, come back to center, place back onto your belly. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, we're just going to push to the other side. So put your left arm out wide and find to work with your neighbor. There you go. <laughs> Not over the water bottle. It doesn't matter where I put it. So left arm extends out wide, top weight in down, hold on to your left hip. Again, you have the option to take that top foot back behind you. That right hand might stay in front of you for support. You can equally take that right hand back behind you to reach for your outer left hip. You can come in that little line if you like. Mm -hmm. beginning we think that because we know where we're going in a practice or we think we know where we're going that we're going to get there fast and then somewhere in the middle we start to realize that we have no idea where we're going and we're confused about what we're even trying to achieve so maybe we get the desire to run away and stop because we think we're doing it wrong and then one day you realize that doing it the way that you're doing it is the only way it can be done and it's your promise your experience of the sky. I cannot tell you what color the sky is. My blue is not your blue. But if we remember like the little bird that we have instincts for when we're ready to break through, we have instincts for when we're ready to fly. And all of that is based on this knowledge that things are fragile. You wanna fly, you need to know how to use the wind. The wind's always changing. You have to know when to stop and rest. You have to know when it's time to hunker down because the weather is bad. So we practice engaging with ourselves in all ways so that there's a trust. I believe the sky will always be there, but I trust myself to be able to see it and hold it, explore it. That may come with that feeling of I'm doing it wrong because you're just learning how your wings work. Take one more breath. And then slowly release, bringing yourself back towards your belly. <laughs> Walk your hands back in underneath your shoulders, please. Press up the hands and knees. <laughs> Find your way back onto your mat if you have migrated. <laughs> Stretch your right leg up and back behind you. Take your left arm forward in front of you. Good. Bend that right knee. Kick your heel in towards your butt. Reach the left hand back to the foot of the ankle. So take that quad stretch. 
And then as you lift that thigh up and you kick your foot into your hand, let it be a shoulder stretch as well. So you're lifting your chest forward as much as you can. And then drop your chin and lift up to the back of your throat. You'll find yourself going higher. Good. And then extend everything back out, arm and leg. Nice. And then release back to hands and knees. Do the second side. Take your left leg back behind you. Take your right arm forward in front of you. Good. Draw up through that low rib cage. Draw up through below your belly button. And then bend your left knee. Keep the heel in. Reach back to the foot or the ankle. So even as you reach for that foot, the tendency is to push the ribs forward, push the pelvis forward. Don't do that. Continue to draw up and pull your sternum and your tailbone away from each other. That's what gives you that stretch through the whole length of your belly, transverse abdominis, <laughs> your back. Kick your foot into your hand, press into the floor, lift the back of your throat, and suddenly you have that feeling of weightless. Extend the leg, extend the arm. Really nice, Lisa. Good, Elisa. Nice, Becca. And then release back to hands and knees. Good. Downward facing dog as you're ready. I know you're like, there should have been a child's pose there. <laughs> In your mind, there's a child's pose there. <laughs> right leg comes up and back behind you. Down dog. Split, please. Good. Step that foot forward between the hands. Lunge. You got it. Inhale the arms up to the sky. High lunge. Good. Excellent, you guys. Bend the elbows wide and the cactus arms. Again, pull your armpits super wide, but then squeeze your lower elbows slightly in. So you get those pectoral muscles to actually wake up. Good. And now take your heart to the sky. Take a little baby back bend. Nice. And then stretch your arms alongside your ears. Keep the hands facing forward so you have that wideness of your chest and let everything fall back. Beautiful. And then come all the way back up, please. Release the hands down to the floor. Good. Step your left foot forward alongside the right, standing forward fold. Take your hands to your hips, come all the way up to the stand. Left knee comes up towards your chest. Good. Take that left thigh over top of the right, wrapping the legs for eagle. Good. Squeezing those outer shins, not letting the left hip spin all the way forward. Pull it wide. And then arms out, right arm comes on top of left in front of your chest, wrap the forearms as well. Nice, Susan. You got it, Melody. Good, Meredith. Good, Becca, watch that left hip is spinning forward too much, pull it back. Nice, you guys. Get as long as you can, draw back through your throat. Butt goes back. Now bring your elbows forward towards your knees, round everything and as you do. It's like that end of that exhale. So pull up from your uh, base of your pubis bones. <laughs> And then rib cage up and wide, navel under your ribs. Lift through the back of your throat. So there's that feeling of the wings at the back of your shoulders. And then look slightly forward here. Stay engaged. Take that left leg back behind you into warrior three. Arms and eagle if you can. Good. Nice, you guys. You got to trust. Heart forward. And then unwind the arms. Arms alongside your ears. You got it, Nancy. Stretch out. Good, Jen. And then release the hands down to the floor, please standing split, beautiful Heidi. Left leg kicks up to the sky. And again, in our minds, we think we know where the sky is. We have no freaking idea. Good guys. Again, press into your hands, scoop into that low part of your belly, up into your ribs, lift the back of your throat. Nice. Excellent, you guys. And then go ahead and step all the way back, nice long lunge. Inhale the arms down. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not the way I want this to go. Take those hands back down to the floor. <laughs> Step back to plank pose, please. Up or push up. Sorry, that didn't work exactly the way I But lower down to the floor slow. That's okay. Point the toes back behind you, please. Bend your knee as you kick your heels in towards your butt or press your knees down. Your heels are in. Knees root down. And then press into your hands, please rise up into your cobra pose with your knees bent. Keep pressing down through the tips of your knees, but pulling the top of those thighs forward and up. It's like you're dropping your tail. And your armpits keep pulling forward and forward and forward and forward. And the back of your throat lifts, drop your chin. Jaladara Banda. And then slowly release. Nice job, you guys. Take those feet back down to the floor. Good. Mm -hmm. Press into your knees so your feet are still tucked, your toes are tucked. Press into your knees, please. Let your butt pop up just a little bit. 
and then push into those hands, make sure they're in that cobra position. And then start to pull your ribs away from the floor, lift the back of your throat, reverse chaturanga, come all the way back up the plank. Oh, yeah. So if I pop up a little bit, don't worm it. All right, come on back down. Don't worm it. Don't do the worm thing. So the idea here, you guys, is not to do that kind of sway back reverse worm where you're like, oh, my chest comes up and then I somehow fling my hips up into, into plank. That's why we're starting with the knees, right? So tuck your toes, press into your knees, feel the tops of your thighs lift, your butt lifts. Good. So you got to get that low belly engaged here. So already feel like that low belly is pulling forward and up, taking that arch out of your lower back. Now start to push into your hands, feel your middle ribs pull up, like you're connecting your pelvic bones to your ribs. And then as you push into your hands, that chest has to contract. So squeeze in at your armpits. And now push the floor away. Your butt and your shoulders should move at the same rate. You can keep your knees on the floor until you get to that point where now you can lift your knees gracefully into plank. Does that work? Yeah. yeah. You're like, whatever. <laughs> Hips to the sky, downward facing dog. Whatever you say, Chris. Pedal your feet. But that's the thing, right? It's not just try to get to what we think the goal is, but to pay attention to how we are the resources that we have to achieve that goal. Because you can get to plank and the plank's not going to be something that really strengthens you if your lower back is still not engaged. Right? <clears throat> so this concept of reaching into that infinite and is define what your potential is to engage with it. And often we cut that off because that feeling of being fragile is scary. I don't want to feel like I failed. I don't want to feel like this is going to go away. Left leg up and back behind you, down dog split. So we get used to that knowing that everything is fragile. Step that foot forward between the hands, lunge. Inhale the arms to the sky, lunge. You got it. Turn the palms forward. This time, hook your thumbs together overhead. Your palms are facing forward, your thumbs are hooked. And it's like you're pulling apart so those inner elbows get wider and you're lifting through the top of your chest, the back of your throat. Good. Bend those elbows even wider, almost like you're trying to come into cactus arms, but you can't because your thumbs are hooked. Draw your throat back in space. And now draw your arms back in space. And now draw your ears back in space. And now draw your arms back in space. Just keep those armpits going wide. Now draw your ears back in space. And now your arms again. And now your ears and your chest is lifting the whole time. Now stretch your arms to straight, still hooking those thumbs. Keep pulling apart. You have that wideness through your chest. These are your pectorals. <laughs> Good. Heart to the sky. Take that baby back bend. And while you're there, release the thumbs. Let those elbows go straight out into cactus arms. Feel that wideness and still the strength of your back. And then come all the way back up. Release the hands to the floor. Let it go. Downward facing dog. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Come forward to plank pose, please. Let's look at Lower down the floor slow, coming through knees versus knees. Bend your knees, keep your heels in towards your butt. Reach back for the feet or the ankles if you can. And if that's not working today, keep your hands alongside your ribs like you would for cobra. If you're holding your feet, don't let your knees lay wide. Keep your knees in line with your hips. Root down to the tips of those knees. So again, it's like the tops of the thighs come slightly forward. Keep your heels glued to your butt. Yeah, heels glued to your butt. Don't lift them. And then start to bend your elbows up towards the ceiling to lift up your upper chest to the shoulder stretch. So bend your elbows. The point here is to bend the elbows, not to get the chest higher, but to bend the elbows. Keep your heels in towards your butt. Don't let those heels lift. Keep those thighs reading down. And if you're not reaching your feet, you're lifting your upper chest like cobra pose with your knees back. Good. And then slowly release. Nice. Stretch your arms forward in front of you. Good. Point the feet back behind you. Press forward through the front of your pelvis. Pull the legs up off the floor. Lift the upper body as well like Superman. Superwoman. Super, Super whatever. Superhero. Pull your ribs in. Nice. Draw your arms a little higher. Bring your ears in line with your arms. Let's do it that way. Wherever your arms are, bring your ears in line with your arms. Now lift the back of your throat. Good, lift your arms as high as your ears. 
Now lift the back of your throat with your gaze down at the floor. Lift with arms alongside your ears. One more breath. Good, and release. Turn one cheek to the side or make a pillow with your hands. Contemplate the meaning of your existence. <laughs> When nothing makes sense anymore, that's all you can do. Contemplate the meaning of your existence. What am I doing here? You're finding out what it is to be alive, what you're doing here. It's a wonderful realization to know that you don't know what the sky is and that you're not supposed to. You will practice yoga diligently for decades beyond lifetimes. You will never hit the edge of the sky. You can't know it. You can't master it. You can feel it as something that is real. It's something that exists not just outside in some imagined space, but it exists within you. So I know we don't love blank, <laughs> most of us. We don't love feeling like we're pushed to our edges. We don't love feeling vulnerable. We don't love feeling fragile. But it's in that that we have the freedom to really live as fully as possible. So when the yogis say you have to surrender, you have to let go of your grasp, that's what it means. You have to be willing for everything to be fragile, to know that it is meant to break. And nothing you can do will keep it from doing so. But you have the instinct for when it's your turn to break through. And when it's your turn to fly. So we practice being willing for things to break and to believing in ourselves to move through that into that big space that opens up. Forehead back to the floor. Bend your knees, keep your heels in towards your butt. Reach for the feet or the ankles if you can, or again, keeping the hands where they are alongside your ribs. Got to make sure those knees are not playing wide this time. While your forehead is still on the floor, start to bend your elbows up towards the ceiling. Nice. Pull up through that low rib cage, send your pubis bone down so again you're engaging below the belly button. Now start to kick your thigh, your feet into your hands, lift your thighs up and lift the upper body as well, coming into bow pose. If you immediately crane your neck back to try and look up, don't look down. <laughs> and then lift the back of your throat again, Jalandara Banda, don't forget. And again, if your hands are on the ground here, you're just lifting up through the upper back into that cobra position, pressing down through your knees. Beautiful. One more breath. Bend your elbows. Don't lock them and lift your chest higher. Lift your throat higher. Beautiful. And then slowly release. Nice, you guys. Flip over onto your back. Oh, my God. <laughs> what happened today? <laughs> What do you call? <coughs> Onto your back. Mm -hmm. You take your right ankle on top of your left side, please. Lift your left foot parallel to the floor. Reach through to hold that leg if you like. And relax the shoulders back down. Mm -hmm. This position is very easy to get sort of obsessed about what the right knee is doing. It should be wider, it should be doing this, it should be doing that. Focus on your left leg. Is your left hip in line with your right? And is that knee tracking straight towards your shoulder? And is your heel in line with your knee? I don't know, I don't look really at those things. Is your low back anchoring to the floor and is that side crease able to get softer? So you're actually folding the legs in towards the belly. The spine stays really rooted. Uh, deep breath. 
And then go ahead and release that left foot down to the floor, please. Pull your right knee all the way in towards your chest. Keep that left foot where it is. Hold behind your right side. Send that leg straight up towards the sky. Hamstring stretch. So now when you press that right thigh into your hand, you're trying to draw the top of that right thigh crease away from your belly. So you're pulling it wide and down. Yeah. So it's like a rotation. It's not just a straightforward, it's a little rotation. Don't let that left knee splay. Good. Press that thigh into your hand. Reach up through the underside of your ankle. And then press that thigh down into the hip socket. So your sacrum moves down, going down. Good. If you're clenching your butt here, that's the opposite of what I'm saying. So relax your butt. Nice. One more deep breath. Press that thigh into your hand. Beautiful. And then start to bend the left knee when you bring it wide towards your armpit. Sorry, your right knee. The leg is in the air. Sorry, that leg is on the floor. Keep it there. Bend that knee that's in the air towards your armpit. Reach your right hand inside the knee to reach your ankle or your foot for half happy baby. Keep your left foot on the floor. Stack that heel on top of the knee. So it's like that knee is drawing down to the floor outside the armpit. But then root your right groin, sorry, left groin too down towards the floor, so that's supporting leg. Oh. <laughs> nice, you guys. Notice how much you're pulling here versus how much you are allowing your thigh creases to soften. One more deep breath. As you exhale, as you glide, lift your shoulders up off the floor and start to bring that uh, right forearm, wrap it around your calf. Like you're going to bring your knee up over your shoulder. If that feels like a bad idea, stay where you are. Nice. Even here, drop your chin and press through the back of your throat. Now it doesn't feel like it's going up. It feels like it's going back, but it's still elongating the upper shoulders. And then slowly release. Please hug that right knee in towards your chest. <laughs> nice. And then place it down to the floor. Plant both feet. Take your arms into robot arms, so elbows bent for bridge pose, feet as wide as your hips. And then as you press into the upper arms here, before you lift your hips, just press into the arms and feel a lift of your armpits up. Good, so it's like you're doing the back bend, but your hips are still on the floor. So reach down to the tops of the shoulders. Feel that lift of the chest. This also should feel like your pectorals. And then press into your feet and drawing the navel in and up. Start to lift your hips up off the floor. So don't just push into your hips, but draw the navel into support as you lift your hips. And now pull your knees towards the tips of your toes, pull your armpits up to the sky, and bring your sternum up towards the top of your head. Nice. Bridge pose is about how long you can get. And then release the hips down to the floor. Excellent. Left ankle comes on top of right thigh. Right shin comes parallel to the floor. Reach through the hole. Flex those feet. You have no idea how hard it is for me not to use the same talk I would use with my daughter. Flex the feet. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, to stay awake and pay attention to not the leg that you think is doing the exciting thing. Pay attention to the leg that is your support, the right leg. Is the knee tracking with your shoulder? Is the heel in line with your knee? Are you relaxing through both shoulders, both sides of your sacrum? Are you trying to yank your legs in or is there a softening of the thigh? As long as we think that we have to try so hard to get somewhere, we will get stuck in the trying instead of the arriving. The sky is the sky, it's already there. The question is, is how much are you willing to see of it?
So take one more breath here, just noticing how much of your spine can relax to the floor. And then go ahead and release that right foot to the floor. Bring your left knee in towards your chest, all the way in. Hold behind your thigh and then extend that left heel up towards the ceiling. So you're taking the hamstring stretch. Press your thigh back into your hand. So you're pulling your thigh away from your belly. And then drop your groins back down to the floor. So there should be a relaxing of your butt. Good. Reach up through the underside of the ankle. Not there yet. In with it. Good. Groins down, you guys. That's it. Let's see. And now start to bend that left knee towards the outer armpit, reaching your left arm inside the knee for the ankle or the foot. And if reaching for the foot makes your shoulder come all the way off the floor and your neck strain, reach for your ankle or behind your knee or behind your thigh so that you can relax the shoulders. And then stack that heel up over the knee. Keep the knee wider than your armpit and drop through that tailbone again. Nice. Half happy baby is only half happy as full baby. <laughs> Wait. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ardha Ananda Balasana. I used to joke and say, well, are you only half as happy here? Mm -hmm. Or can you be equally happy here? The more challenging position. So take one more breath. And then if you'd like, on that exhale, if you want to uh, lift your shoulders up off the floor, start to wrap your left uh, forearm around inside and around the calf. Like you're going to bring your knee all the way up over that shoulder. Go for it. You got to try and keep your sacrum rooted to the floor as much as you can. Your tail will come up a little bit or can. Good. Nice, you guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. So bring this down. And bring that. Good. And then slowly release, please, hugging that knee in towards your chest. You got it. Place both feet down to the floor. Yeah. Bend your elbows back into robot arms. Feet planted. Root down to the upper arms. Again, feel that lift from your armpit, but pull the shoulders down. So try this. Roll your shoulders up and back. Exaggerate it. Arch your ribs so that you feel the tops of your shoulders really connect to the floor. Really, that top rib. So arch your back. Find the top ridge of your shoulder. Really do it. Arch, 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 arch. So. Nice, you guys. Now keep that. Let your throat get a little longer so you drop your chin. You're still doing Jalandara Banda. Press down through the upper arm. Press into your feet. Still engage the navel. Lift your hips up. Your ribs are already arched. That's fine. Lift your hips up. All the way up. Meet the arch of the upper back. Keep rolling your weight back into the tops of those shoulders. Let your throat get longer. Good. Exaggerate that. Really go. Heart towards your chin. Good. Now start to keep that there and just gently engage into your heels and pull your knees towards the tips of your toes. Good. But keep that feeling of there's so much space to keep lifting through your armpit. Find the back bend. Then balance it. And then slowly release the hips down to the floor. Nice, you guys. And then just pause there, maybe letting the hands drop to the floor, maybe taking the arms overhead to hold opposite wrists or elbows. Keep the feet flat and the knees bent. If you'd like to, while you are here, Start to notice again on your exhales, how at the end of the exhale, you can engage that pelvic floor in and up and feel the navel drawing in and up under the ribs. It's gonna feel like your ribs pressing down to the floor. And that energy rising all the way up and towards your throat, there's that subtle lengthening the back of the neck and pressing the back of your head into the floor. Hold it, no breath, but contained. And then you release and inhale. So you come back to the bandhas. And maybe do that several times just to remind yourself that when you connect to the energy that is yours, is you're going to feel more confident. Right? You can have all sorts of conversations about what is happening with your nervous system and what's going on here and what's going on there. It doesn't matter. Your mind's going to attach to that and think that it knows what it's doing. Your mind has nothing to do with it. 
right? The experience of that inner prana, your mind does not have to be in charge of it, but it has to be aware of the power that's there, the resource that is there, don't waste it. You're never going to master the sky. You can feel the bigness of it and let that be something that informs your ability to live in the world as big as possible as fully as possible. We're gonna take one more bridge pose here, or if you're feeling a hankering for full wheel, another pectoral stretch, you're welcome to it. So if you're coming into wheel, of course, you're gonna place your hands flat alongside your ears, your elbows up to the ceiling, and you're coming into bridge, robot arms, elbows on the floor, fingers up. Your choice of how you come into your bridge. Maybe you want to go back with that rolling the shoulders all the way back and arching the spine first. Maybe you want to come into it the way that you typically do. So make your choice coming up into bridge pose or wheel, pressing into your hands. Either way, you have that wideness between shoulders and ears. You draw up from the low belly, press into your feet. Nice. Wheel is just a much fancier version of bridge. Good. If you're in a wheel, hug those knees towards each other. Even there, can you drop your chin towards your chest slightly and then you get long to the back of your neck? Beautiful. And then maybe for that extra stretch, right, you start to actually uh, move your weight towards your hands a little bit more so that armpits move towards your wrist. Almost like you're going to straighten your legs. Good. And then slowly release wherever you are. Really nice exercise. And then again, pause. And then draw both knees in towards your chest. It's your full happy baby. So if you didn't achieve your lift first, try again. <laughs> Bend both knees, let them go wide for the armpits, reach for the inner or outer end of your feet or the ankles. Your elbows are inside of your knees. Press your low back down to the floor, please. And again, you find that length at the back of your throat. So the chin drops slightly. And you press with the top of your head and gently down to the back of the head to connect to the floor. Good. Deep breath in. And then on your exhale, if you would like to curl your shoulders up off the floor and start to wrap both arms around your abs as though you are going to just bring your shoulders up inside your knees and eventually just hook your feet together behind your head. <clears throat> like a little bird in an egg. <laughs> Usually, it's traditionally, we say like a turtle in the shell, but you know, either one works. Good. Squeeze those knees in, you guys. Curl. Beautiful. Even if they're, uh, your shoulders are nowhere near your knees, curl. Beautiful. Good. Good. And then slowly release whatever you did. Hug your knees and towards your chest. Mm -hmm. Rotate or circle the knees. Massage the lower back in any way that feels fantastic. And then start to come back to stillness, please. And scoot your hips over to the left and drop your knees to the right. Little twist. And stretch that left arm out wide outside or along the side of your shoulder. Play with if it feels more like a stretch to your chest to have your fingers uh, pointing down towards the floor or with your palm facing up. But my suggestion is if your arm is extended, is to press that hand into the floor to the arm just a little bit engaged. And draw that shoulder wide away from here. And then slowly come back to center, please. Move your hips over to the right, drop your knees to the left. The same thing, if that right arm is extending out from the shoulder, play with having the palm facing down or up. And having the arm all the way out doesn't feel like it works for you. It's a little too much on the shoulder. Take the arm up alongside your ear. So 
possibility for that. So you have an opportunity here if you would like to begin your savasana in a supported fish pose. And you have blocks or a bolster and a block, you can do that. So that supported fish pose is gonna look like one block underneath the uh, lower edge of your shoulder blades. Second block on its highest setting underneath the back of the head. So you're laying back over the blocks. That makes sense. And if you have a bolster, you can use the bolster underneath your rib cage and a block underneath your head. Good. Again, typically that first block will be on its middle setting. The second block under your head will be higher, but you can do it many different ways. Some people like that block under your shoulder blades to be going vertically along your spine. If you prefer that, absolutely you can do it that way. And if you do not want to do supported fish or do not have the props to do so, supine baddha konasana is a great idea. Need my help in the studio. I'm walking around. You need my help at home. I'm sending you first. <laughs> <laughs> not always feel delicious, but if it feels particularly awkward, let me know. The opportunity, of course, is to drop open, not just with the body, but to drop open internally. Very classic meditation focus to say that in that inner vision, that all you see is blue sky. As your breath moves maybe a little bit deeper, you see what happens if you allow that possibility of being endless to come into your mind. Maybe it's the blue sky, maybe it's the ocean, maybe it's the night sky full of stars. But it's to stop looking for the edges of everything and to see what happens when you assume that there are no edges. There will always be more to breathe into. And then at any point, you feel the instinct to come out of this, to come into a full Shavasana. You're welcome to do that. If you want to stay here for your Shavasana, you're welcome to do that.
very gently bring the awareness back to the breath, wherever it wandered to. And aware of the breath, not just as something that is flowing, but that is a giving and a receiving. It's not just oxygen, but it's prana that flows through everything coming to you. It's like that constant relationship where the sky is always raining down everything that you need. Not always what you want, but what you need to know yourself completely, to know what it is to fly, know what it is to live. And so you will never be a master of that. You can become a master of the flying. Begin to let your body stretch and move in whatever ways serve it well. And as you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest and roll to the right side. And take a moment before you begin to push the floor away, come back to an upright seated position. Drawing the hands together in front of the heart center upon the pump. There's just us in the sky. That's all there's ever been. So the practice says that instead of looking for the edges of what we think is all we can handle, as we look at it like those eggshells, is today this is what I can breathe into. And I know that that eggshell or that feeling of boundary or limitation is it's fragile. It's meant to break. Mm -hmm. And one day it will either because I will break it open myself or the world will break open for me. So we cultivate the belief that as much as the world keeps breaking open is that we keep breathing into it. That that endlessness is not just out there, it's in us. We have an endless ability to keep breathing into whatever is here. And when we are willing to do that, we don't get to define the eggshell, but we're willing to breathe into it as big as it is, as much of the sky as we can hold then there's that feeling that there's a freedom. You can live completely as yourself. And so we practice believing in ourselves and knowing that that same potential that is endless, it's not just out there, it's in here. You're not defined by the eggshell. It will break and you will fly when you're ready. Deep breath in for the sound of all. Lighting the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste. Thank you guys so, so much. Have a beautiful rest of your day, rest of your week until I see you again. Heads up today, this afternoon, Angela is doing Kirtan. If you want to sign up for that, I believe you still can. Next weekend, um, Neil is doing an intro to meditation course. So if you would like to uh, check that out, it's next weekend. Reiki trainings are coming up the weekend following on the 26th. Dave and I are doing um, asana and gong healing from two to four on that um, Sunday. So check that out as well. Navaratri is coming up next week. Not this week, following week, sorry, I'm 22nd starts. Um, so I am going to do something. I'm just a last minute person. So keep your eyes open for whatever it is that I'm doing. <laughs> and we will see you guys soon. Thanks, Ron.